Hey again, everyone. Today I want to go over a low to medium effort method that you can use to potentially improve the quality of your stable diffusion training datasets. That's removing complex or potentially confusing parts of the training images. And that sounds like a lot of work, so why bother? Well, you may not need to depending on your images and your training settings. But certain LoRa types and optimizers like Prodigy that adjust learning rates automatically make it fixated on anomalies or high contrast parts of the image and seem to overemphasize them in the finished model. You can get around this by using advanced training parameters like the SNR and the Koya SS script, but I like to abide by the philosophy of garbage in, garbage out. Most people are familiar with Photoshop's Magic Wand tool, but Windows 10 comes with a lightweight image editor. Paint 3D that has its own version of the tool that tends to work very well for quick image edits. Here's an example of a Wonder Woman image from the comics training dataset that I was using in the other video. That onomatopoeia clang text was moving the model into trying to put block letters into a lot of the output. You can correct the image with standard editing tools like the paintbrush with adjustable opacity, the spray can or pencil, and select the colors with the eyedropper tool with the shortcut key I. I'm certainly not a digital artist, but I can do a decent job of editing something out of a picture given enough time and patience. But this is supposed to be data processing, not finger painting, so let's close that and try some magic. I'll reopen the image and use the magic select tool up at the top. You can use the mouse wheel to quickly zoom in and out. Adjust the magic select box and hit next. You can add and remove parts of the selection using the tools in the upper corner. You don't need to be too detailed when adding or removing. Just draw a line or click a dot on a bit of the selection to add or remove. But try to keep the modified selection visually similar or the tool can get confused. Leave the autofill background selected and hit done. The selection should be clipped out and can be removed by hitting the delete key. The background is often filled in pretty well, but the tool does have difficulty if you're cutting something out next to a pattern, texture, or highly detailed part of the image like hair. After the cutout, I find it a lot easier to use the dropper to match colors and sort of paint in a vaguely matching patch job. Here's another image that could use some tweaking. In this one, there is a forearm and a hand in the bottom of the corner of the image. I don't want to have any more disembodied limbs in my model output than I need to, so I'm going to try to trim this out. I'm going to hit select, and I think that bounding box is just fine. So I'll hit done, and then I'll hit delete. That looks pretty good actually. I didn't bother to select the muzzle flash and figured the autofill would try to duplicate some of that orange. I think it looks pretty good. And here's one other typical image of the kind that I'd tweak. There's some text on a sign in the background here. While it's not as prominent as the clang text earlier, I think it's still too visually different from the rest of the image. The model tends to fixate on these points, so I'd like to have as few of them as possible. Using the magic select tool, I'll drag the bounding box and select the bank sign, and then hit delete. That did a pretty great job of filling in those buildings. There's some color glow there that can be removed quickly by matching the adjacent colors and zipping over it with the, the spray brush at half opacity if you wanted to. One thing to note though, if you're adjusting your images and you're training with the cache latency to disk setting, you're going to want to delete the corresponding .npz files so they're regenerated when using the new images. Eliminating visual anomalies in individual images can help your models converge faster with more generalizable styles and stable characters and objects. If you're having difficulty with a particular character or style, and it seems like the training parameters are fine, it may be worth spending a few minutes trying to tweak some of the images. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button or leave a comment. I'm trying to get the channel out of YouTube jail and get the videos recommended to appropriate audiences, but it isn't going so well. The low watch time percentage of tutorial videos and the international audience have really messed up the recommendations. So if you found it helpful, please hit like or leave any random comment you feel like. I think it's about the only thing that's going to keep the channel going at this point. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay human.